Oseo. Oseo. Bumbaba. We are still continuing with Asia, specifically Japan. And I'm introducing my painting here. This is the ghost of Komaru no Tose. And I painted that for the piece you're going to hear. This uh, painting was exhibited in uh, Elizabeth Rodriguez's gallery three or four years ago now. I had a one-man show in Borrego Springs. And our guitarist, uh, Jim Moore, he graciously played for the reception and opening for that show. I'd like to mention him at this time. <clears throat> he is having to have recover from surgery like that. <clears throat> So let me proceed here with this reading that uh, goes with this painting. <clears throat> Ghost. I am, I know, you don't believe in ghosts, but I am the ghost of Kumaru no Tose. I should introduce myself according to all the rules of polite conduct. In my own time, when I was a young aspirant for Zen wisdom, I was living in the monastery of Mautier, under the supervision of the venerable abbot Tokai Daishi. And so once, doing what many have done, I humbly asked him about the great truth, and how to approach it. And I received, in Zen fashion, the answer to me, a slap in the face. But instead of the sudden and expected result, the desired enlightenment, surely enlightenment about the extinction of all differentiations, including this very extinction, the result came over me like lightning. I myself promptly replied with a much more vigorous answer, the most pointed slap reply you ever saw, and off the old master went, dead as a ghost. In good and legal form, my enlightenment's answer should have been interpreted as Zen-like. Yet it was judged differently. I too was dispatched. How dishonorably by the executioner and went a ghosting in my turn. I went in search of my poor old dead master to thank him for giving me what he called the truth. The only truth indeed. I never could find him. So you see, I come from afar. I wish to rest here a while and wait for the return of my companion, the not so mysterious companion of a traveling ghost, Monsieur Michael McClure. And with that, I'm introducing now a memorial for Monsieur Michael McCour, who passed away very recently. To start off, um, I was a college student in the college, California College of the Arts, and I was a student in his modern literature class. And I'm very thankful also that he introduced me to Garcia Lorca in Spanish and much, much more. I did drawings of him as I sat in the classroom watching him. He was a good-looking, very debonair fellow. <clears throat> and the school was very, very fortunate. And I was very fortunate to have him on the faculty there. <clears throat> uh, it's hard to say, um, coming up with, he was a literary genius. Even that seems to be too small for all this wonderful man had brought about and contributed. He's a playwright, he's a poet. Um, uh, Jim Morrison, you know, he really prompted Jim Morrison to convert his genius of energy into poetry. 
and that there are photographs of McClure and Jim Morrison with his Triumph motorcycle in the alleyway between the City Lights bookstore and the coffee shop Vesuvius there in San Francisco. And much, much more. Um, it could go on and on with all uh, the credits for Michael McClure. Um, I, I, I can't even come up with a term that would encompass it all. Now, the, the age that we're referring to here is we call the 60s. And we'll see some of the things that, um, you know, studied this period. Starting off with uh, um, Allen Ginsberg, and he debuted his poem, How, at the Sixth Gallery there. And he was then published by Lawrence Berlinghetti, who also owns the City Lights bookstore. And they were busted. And <laughs> the moral police busted them. And it went to trial. Very interesting trial. A film has been made of that, if you ever look it up. It's very good. And then we'll think of Lenny Bruce. Lenny Bruce was at the um, club, The Hungry Eye, up there on Upper Grant Street. He, too, was busted for obscenity and um, hounded, you know, hounded him to death. And another is Lenore Kandel. And I still have her wonderful book, The Love Book. And she, this book, was busted. And the City Lights a Bookstore was busted for this book. <clears throat> and uh, then there's also uh, Michael McClure's play, The Beard, of Billy the Kid and Jean Harlow. At the same time, this was busted. <clears throat> All of this is going on while the United States is carrying on a war in Southeast Asia, uh, Vietnam, May Lai Massacre, illegal invasion of Cambodia, the beating of people who um, differed <laughs> from that, protesters they, they were called. <clears throat> uh, all these things that were going on that were legal and yet, these things that I just mentioned were illegal. And I so like this particular quote concerning McClure's The Beard. <clears throat> the Beard was charged with having damaged society by inserting unlawful thoughts into the imaginations of others. <laughs> Sounds like Socrates, doesn't it? And very well it should, like that. <clears throat> uh, now, the particular piece that I'm going to do in his honor is the, this is the Ghost Town Trust. And this is my original copy from 1969. Incidentally, in 1969, following all of these good credits, I too was dispatched. <laughs> I was expelled from the graduate program for my poem, of Siddhartha and I was charged with undermining the Western institution. So I'm happy to, to say that. <laughs> and this is, this is the original copy of McClure's Ghost Tantras. And let me read his introduction to start it off. It's the most sensible. You've never heard anything like this before. These are my personal songs, but anyone can sing them. Pronounce them as they are spelled and don't worry about details. Use a natural voice and let the vibrations occur. They come from a swirling ball of silence that melds with other sounds and thought. They were written in kitchens and bedrooms, front rooms and airplanes and a couple in Mexico City. Their purpose is to bring beauty and changed the shape of the universe. I was here, and I liked it. It was all okay. I suffered. There were scents and flowers and textures, beautiful women. I was a handsome man. I invented love. I radiated genius for those who saw me with loving eyes. I was happy. I laughed and cried constantly new sights and sounds. I trembled and sweated at the sight of beauty. I laughed at strong things because I loved them. 
wanting to kick them in and make freedom, when I go, I'm gone. Don't resurrect me or duplicates of my atoms. It was perfect. I am sheer spirit, says Michael McClure. Now let me refer to over here, all of these things. Um, you can see here is the meditating Zen man, you know, who has become this ghost. And here, this is a good portrait of Michael McClure. The last time that I had seen him in person was at the Kenneth Rexroth Memorial in San Francisco. <clears throat> and uh, standing room only, people were hanging from the rafters for that one. <clears throat> and our friend and sound man, uh, Richard Dickinson and his son, made it all the way over there to the City Lights bookstore on this special occasion to meet Michael McClure. <clears throat> Uh, the City Lights Bookstore continued to have readings of these now very, very notable, if not famous poets and authors, and, and that would be this case. And for me, Richard had Michael McClure um, inscribe this dedication to me, which he also says, as you'll hear in the Ghost Tantras, Roar, Michael McClure. <laughs> so, um, this, is, this is the the last portrait that I think of him. So that was recent. Um, Vivian Olds, who is also going to be watching this, also was with him recently just before he passed away and uh, took some um, candid photos of him also, so we have all of that. Now, reading the ghost tantras, oh, let me say, um, I have this piece, this is a piece of lava um, with a face in it that I found out here east in the desert, and I'm kind of putting it together with this kind of immortalization of this wonderful, wonderful genius of all literature and language, poetry, play, what else can I say? there. <clears throat> to read the Ghost Tantras in its entirety is very long and, and really takes a lot, a lot of energy. And I've done readings of these before, even in the children's classroom, which they really like. They like to hear the way that the ghost talks, especially with the ghost says, we don't care. So they like that. <laughs> So I've had a lot of markers for the ones that I've selected to, to uh, read out. In this case, Michael has helped me because he has made his own selection of some of the verses from the Ghost Tantras, and that's the ones I'm going to read uh, as best I can following his directive. Again, this is not like something you have ever heard before. Again, Michael is a master of language and everything else, so these things are not off the cuff. Be not sugar, but be love, looking for sugar. Yeah, rah, rah. Pleasure fears me, foot rose, foot breath. By blar mokoror tar, now brew. In the middle of the night I dreamed I was a creature like the great Tibetan yogi Milarepa. I sang a song beginning, Home lies in front of you, not in the past. Follow your nose to it. It had great mystic import, both apparent and hidden. I was pleased with it. Oh, lovely line between day and dream. We slip over and under thee. 
when we are pleased and richly placid. Refuge for all sentient beings, who art thou? I, me, who, 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 go, run, I hear, me, grrr, grrr, cave, me, grrr, grrr, who, globe, was it not sentient? But I, more than all, am a full universe, full, make, grrr. Marilyn Monroe, today thou hast passed the dark barrier, diving in a swirl of golden hair. I hope you have entered a sacred paradise for full, warm bodies, full lips, full hips and laughing eyes. Ah, roh, roh, no, that, oh, oh, oh. Farewell, perfect mammal. Fare thee well from thy silken couch and dark day. Ah, roh, ah, roh, gar, na, ho, yes, farewell, mur, grum, far, ra, 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 ah, ho, ho, tar, no, gra, ra, Silence the eyes, be calm the senses, drive dragoor from the fresh repugnance, thou whole, thou feeling creature, live not for others, but affect thyself from thy enchanted interior, believing what thou carry, thy trillonotic multitude of grass and bushes and silence, oh, you are heavier and dimmer than you knew, and more solid and full of pleasure. Ra, 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 I love to think of the red-purple rose in the darkness cooled by the night. We are served by machines making satins of sounds. Each blot of sound is a bud on a star. Body eats bouquet of ears vista. Grrr, booty ears, news eyes, dim thou. No, no, ho, grrr, burna, grrr me. Now the roofs each now thee. The machines are too dull when we are lion poems that move and breathe when we grow on three miko through three thang no three misses. Juan is to scroll. The stars are a shield of nothing, created of nothing. And I call on thee to swing. Har mar kororu ya hai hau tantor rar. O ran tauni tau smells so sheen. Ta greens woven my laughter in no. Beyond the final first debi now shimetter. Poor ran grass never how. Higher roar. Bleed to my cane. Draw shigir, raise up thy breeze. Ah, street and knees, look up! See our calm, titanic, minuscule gestures. Rah, no, rah, no. In tranquility, thy grahir, I ho, roaring, grahor, gahar, grahar, gahir, tawish na. Gah-oo-gah-er-gah-gah-er-gah-er-gah-er-gah-er-gah-er-gah-er-gah-er-gah-er-gah-er-gah-er-gah-er-gah-er-gah-er-gah-er-gah-er-gah-er-gah-er-
ability. And then we follow that with his mad sonnet. The plumes of love are black. The plumes of love are black and delicate. Oh, and shine like moron eyed plumes of a peacock with violet shine and yellow on shadowy black. They spray, spray from the body of the beloved, veins shaking in air. And I do not want black plumes or agony, and I do not surrender, and I ask for noble combat, to give pure love as best I can, with open heart, love. I have not seen you before, and you are the most beautiful, more beautiful than a plume, stately striding in space and warm, your human breasts. Let me make your smile and heart-shaped face immortal. Your gray eyes are what I finally come to with my brown, and your high cheeks and your hair rough for a woman's like a lamb and the walking virtue that you are. Thank you very much.